Hi, I'm Mark Barsamian. In this video, I'll be introducing continuous income streams, and I'll be discussing what's called the total income from a continuous income stream. This material is from section 6.2 of the book, Applications in Business and Economics. That's applications of the definite integral. More specifically, the reading is from the bottom of page 400 to the top of page 402, example 3. The corresponding homework is this collection of four exercises from section 6.2. Only two of those are in the MyLab system, but the examples that I do today will include material that's from the starred exercises, which are in the book but not in the MyLab system. Basically, that material is visualizing the answers to the other questions using graphs. Recall some useful stuff from previous videos. This exponential function rule for derivatives, the derivative of e to the kx is ke to the kx. The corresponding exponential function rule for indefinite integrals, the indefinite integral of e to the kx is e to the kx over k plus c. And recall the idea of total change problems. The idea is that if you're given the rate of change of some quantity, capital F prime of x, and two numbers a and b with a less than or equal to b, the goal is to find the change in the quantity f, so delta f, which would be capital F of b minus capital F of a. The solution is to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. It says that that change in f, that capital F of b minus capital F of a, is equal to the definite integral of capital F prime. And I see I've got a recurring typo here. That definite integral should have a dx in it. Finally, recall the discussion of the three equal quantities related to area. The change in capital F from x equals a to x equals b. The signed area between the graph of capital F prime and the x-axis from x equals a to x equals b. And the definite integral of capital F prime from a to b, denoted by this symbol. That those three quantities are equal is an important concept for the fourth month of the course. As mentioned earlier, the discussion for today will be about continuous income streams. A particular kind of total change problem involves income from a continuous income stream. The term continuous income stream is an idealized way to think of a source of income. For example, in a job paying $120,000 per year after taxes in monthly paychecks, the income delivery would not be continuous, but rather would consist of maybe 12 payments of $10,000 each. But for the simplest kinds of mathematical analysis, we would sometimes pretend that the income was arriving in a continuous stream at the rate of $120,000 per year. For many questions about income, the answers that you'd get by considering the income stream as continuous are exactly the same as the answers that you'd get by considering the income as arriving in discrete payments. And the answers are more easily obtained when you uh, consider the income stream as continuous. And for questions where the answers are not exactly the same, the answers will still usually be close. And again, they're much more easily obtained. For example, if you're considering questions about an income stream that involve time scales that are long compared to the intervals of the discrete payments, then it doesn't make much difference if one just treats the income stream as continuous. In our examples, the flow rate of a continuous income stream will be denoted f of t. In this expression, t is time in years, and f of t is the flow rate in units of dollars per year at time t. Now I want to introduce the idea of total income from a continuous income stream. So the simplest question that you can ask about a continuous income stream is this. What's the total income that flows in during a time interval t is greater than or equal to a, less than or equal to b? To answer this question, we'll imagine that the income is accumulating in an account with accumulated amount in dollars at time t denoted by capital A parentheses t. It's actually helpful to visualize this with a picture showing money flowing into a bucket. With this notation, the total income, which could be abbreviated capital TI, during that time interval will just be the change in the accumulated amount, capital A of T. That is, this quantity TI would be denoted also delta capital A, which is 
capital A parentheses B minus capital A parentheses A. So in this picture that we've got over here to the right, that quantity would just be the change in the amount of money in the bucket. The key to answering the question posed above, remember the question is, what's the total amount that flows in during this time interval from A to B? The key to answering that question is to note that the amount of money in the bucket is changing because money is flowing into the bucket. And the rate at which the amount of money in the bucket is changing will just be equal to the rate of the flow. That is, capital A prime, that is the derivative of the amount of money in the bucket, is equal to the flow rate, little f of t. So we can find the answer to our question about how much money flowed in during that time interval by integrating. Here's the process. We're interested in this total amount of money that flowed in, so that the total change in the amount of money in the bucket. By the fundamental theorem of calculus, we can get that total change by doing the definite integral of capital A prime. But that just means the definite integral of the flow rate, because capital A prime is the flow rate. In terms of the graph, that would be equal to the area between the graph of little f of t and this should say the time axis, the t axis, from t equals a, it should say, to t equals b, it should say. It's worthwhile to summarize our findings in a nice green box that presents the total income for a continuous income stream. So the total income is this quantity delta A, the change in the amount of money in the account or in that bucket, and it's obtained by integrating the flow rate. For the first example, I want to consider a particular special case that's a simple case, an income stream with constant flow. So the question is, find the total income produced by a continuous income stream in the first 10 years if the flow rate is that, $3,000 per year. So that's constant flow. Well, the solution is the total income is obtained by integrating the flow rate from time A to B. So we integrate the flow rate from time 0 to time 10. So we integrate 3,000 from 0 to 10. From here on out, we just have a definite integral problem. Fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that that definite integral calculation can be obtained by doing an indefinite integral calculation. The indefinite integral details are over here. Of course, the indefinite integral of 3,000 will be 3,000 t plus c. Bring that back in. We find the change in that quantity from 0 to 10. Observe that the constant of integration, the plus c, shows up and then gets canceled in the first subtraction step. The result is $30,000, which makes sense. The flow is constant, $3,000 per year, flows for 10 years. So of course, the total income will just be $30,000. So again, we could have just simply done this in our head, but it's useful to review how the integral works. Question B, illustrate using a graph of the flow rate and a graph of capital A of t. Well, it's worthwhile to start by considering what we know about the accumulated amount, that is this, in order to simplify the result of the, of the indefinite integral. The result of the indefinite integral is this function form, a parentheses t is 3000t plus capital C. That's the general antiderivative, I see I've got a typo here, this should say capital A prime, which is the flow rate, 3,000. Now notice that at time zero, I've got another typo. At time zero, that formula gives us that the amount is C. Therefore, C represents the accumulated amount in the account at time zero. But the problem statement says the first 10 years. So we can assume that the accumulated amount was zero when the income stream started flowing at time zero. So that means the constant C must have the value capital C equals zero. So the accumulated amount is actually this function, not a function form. Capital A of T is 3000 T. So again, the result of that indefinite integral was the function form, capital A of T equals 3000 T plus capital C. 
but we can see that the actual function describing the accumulated amount is simply a of t equals 3000 t. This function has the property that capital A parentheses 0 equals 0. The accumulated amount at time 0 is 0. So the graph of capital A of t will be a line with slope m equals 3000 and y-intercept at 0, 0. On this graph, the quantity that's the total income, that's a change in the accumulated amount from time 0 to time 10, that will appear as a change in height. This change in height here. The difference between the accumulated amount at time 0 and the accumulated amount at time 10. Now to visualize this same uh, total income on a graph of the flow rate, note that the flow rate is constant flow, so its graph will be a horizontal line with line equation y equals 3000. On this graph, that same quantity, the total income, with that delta A, which we obtained by doing an integral of the flow rate, there's a missing equal sign here, that quantity will show up as the area of a region between the graph of f of t and the t-axis. So this region between the graph of the flow rate and the t-axis from t equals 0 to t equals 10 will have signed area 30,000. That's the end of example 1. Our next example of the total income from a continuous income stream has a flow rate that's not constant. The income stream has variable flow. The question is, find the total income produced by a continuous income stream in the first 10 years if the flow rate is this. This is what you could call an exponential flow. So the solution is that we need to integrate the flow rate over the time interval from 0 to 10. So we need to integrate that flow rate function. That's the exponential flow. The fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that that definite integral can be obtained by doing an indefinite integral calculation. As usual, I'll do the indefinite integral details on the next page and bring the results back. You see there's the usual careful arithmetic. The constant of integration shows up and then gets canceled in the first subtraction step. And the result is this exact answer, 10,000 e to the 0.6 minus 10,000. If you type that into a calculator, you get an approximate answer, 82,21,18. The indefinite integral details are here. The indefinite integral of this, we start by simplifying using the constant multiple rule to bring that constant multiple 600 outside. And then we use that indefinite integral rule for the indefinite integral of e to the kt. The indefinite integral of e to the kt is e to the kt over k plus c. And then we have some arithmetic. 600 over 0 0.06 is equal to 10,000. That might seem like something you need a calculator for, but it's not. Notice that 600 over 6 would be 100. 600 over 0 0.6 would be 1,000. So 600 over 0 0.06 would be 10,000. Question B. Illustrate that result using a graph of the flow rate f of t and a graph of a of t. Well, as we did in the previous example, it's worthwhile to consider what we know about the accumulated amount in order to simplify the result of the indefinite integral. Uh, the result of the indefinite integral was this function form, the function form for the amount of money in the account at time t. And that's the general antiderivative of the flow rate because capital A prime equals the flow rate. And if you do the same thing we did in the previous example, uh, realize that at time zero, the accumulated amount has to be zero, that tells you that the value of c in this case has to be the number negative 10,000. So the accumulated amount is this function, this actual function, not a function form, 10,000 e to the 0.06t minus 10,000. This actual function has the property that the accumulated amount at time zero is zero. So a graph of that function will be an increasing exponential shape, but that has a y-intercept at 0, 0. On this graph, the quantity that we found, the total income, will appear as a change in height. This change in height, that's the difference 
in the amount at time 0 and the amount at time 10. The graph of the flow rate, that exponential flow, will also be an increasing exponential shape, but its y-intercept will be at the point 0, 600. On this graph, the same quantity, the total income, that delta capital A, which is obtained by doing this definite integral, see I've got another missing equal sign, that same quantity will correspond to the area of the region between the graph of f of t and the t-axis from t equals 0 to t equals 10. So the signed area of that green region is the total income, which is roughly 82.21.18. I see that I've forgotten to label these graphs. I should really put the formulas on these graphs. This graph is the graph of the flow rate. The previous graph I should label as well. That's the end of that example, and that's the end of the video. Thank you.